Greetings Monster Wranglers, it is Hass here and today we're gonna talk about fast leveling in Dragon Quest Monsters, considering most of you by now should be around mid game, or at least past the lower echelons of the underworld, and the initial leveling guide I released back then during the demo, while it was really useful for a while, the bosses are no longer as rewarding or fast at this point, and it's time to discuss new and more efficient methods. For further Dragon Quest guides, check out the rest of my channel that is already full of them. For now, let's talk about leveling. If you're familiar with Dragon Quest, it should be no surprise to you what's going to be the main method of leveling, but for those who are new, let me introduce you to the infamous Metal Slimes. Metal Slimes are a special, rare encounter in every single Dragon Quest game, and they are known for their incredibly high experience rewards upon defeating them, but also for their dodgy nature, as not only they like to flee from battle, robbing you from all that juicy experience, but defeating them can also be a headache because of their metal body trait that reduces most damage down to only one, which is where monsters like the Killing Machine family tree comes in that you hopefully synthesize for yourself if you've been following my guides, as the Hunter Mac, Killing Machine or the Overkilling Machine can deal more damage to metal slimes and instantly defeat them, so you have to have a specialized team for exactly this purpose. Upon defeating a single Metal Slime at this point, they will reward you over 10,000 experience each of them, way more than anything else at this level, giving you the well needed boost to your level that new monsters might need for synthesis or just leveling your talent trees. Metal Slimes first appear in the Dark Prince after you progress the main story a bit and you've left the lower echelons of the underworld and you're exploring the middle parts of the world, where if you look carefully you'll sometimes bump into these metallic slimes seemingly at random. There are many types of Metal Slimes, from the normal ones, liquid Metal Slimes and even Metal Slime Kings that reward the most experience, but in this video we'll focus on mid-game leveling for now and I'll introduce you to the very basics of level grinding in the game so you can safely do it yourselves too. So like I said earlier, it might seem that metal slimes spawn at random like they usually do in Dragon Quests, but in fact in Dragon Quest Monsters, metal slimes aren't completely random and there is a very precise system on their spawns and appearance that upon learning you can absolutely exploit to your advantage and gain monstrous amounts of experience in order to build your teams faster. The most important thing to know about metal slimes is that their spawns are not random. In fact, they have fixed spawn locations on every single map, but as far as I know, they only spawn at one spot at a time. Huge shout out for the Japanese community here for providing all the useful resources and materials for us that we can also use in the West. So basically, if you visit all these locations on a single map, you will 100% meet one metal slime at one of the locations and will be able to battle them for a lot of XP. So that already sounds great, right? Now how do we farm them then? The respawns are also very precise, as there are two criterias for metal slimes to reappear on one of these spots on the map. The first one is changing of the season, which we can either wait for or we can use a seasoning, but I would say it's either way too slow or too expensive, and instead the second method is by far the best, which is switching to another circle of the underworld, as zooming to a whole new world respawns all of them, and so the best method of finding metal slimes is to swap between two circles and rinse and repeat each time you find yourself a metal slime. So all of this sounds pretty good, right? It's not even as random as we feared, but it can be optimized even further and there are already existing metal slime routes made by the Japanese community to make this grind as enjoyable as possible, so let's take a look. The two circles chosen for metal farming is the circle of indulgence and the circle of caprice, where if you look at this quick map I made you can see most of the metal slime locations they can be on, though I didn't mark all of them on caprice, only the ones that matter for this route specifically and the ones we'll be looking for. So the idea is to zoom to Pierre's home to start, and just like the arrow shows here, visit all the spots through the desert looking for very easy to notice metal slimes all the way back to the tower in the north, and whether you were lucky to find a metal slime or not, after defeating one or after not finding any, it is time to reset the spawns like I mentioned earlier by zooming to our second chosen circle, the circle of indulgence. If you do need these pictures just like the synthesis charts, they will be available in my Twitter account for download. Our circle of indulgence route starts at the deserted dungeon, you can see on the map there's quite a few metal slimes in the south we want to touch, and instead of wasting our time exploring the whole map in the north too, just like the route shows we'll touch and look for metal slimes only in the southern regions of the map where there aren't any honey rivers and bridges to delay our farming and give us a headache, and if you're lucky by the time you would get to the end you'll bump into a metal slime. Once you're done here too, whether you found the slime or not, 
you zoom back to Pierre's home in the circle of Caprice, and you start the whole process over. It's easy as that. Since metal slimes always appear in one of these locations, and in both circles we touch at least half of the possible spawn points, you'll most likely always see at least one metal slime as you zoom back and forth, and of course it will depend on your luck, but it's nowhere near bad and frankly, it goes really fast to the point that this grind can be very enjoyable to do. If you really want to maximize your efficiency at farming experience, then some people recommend saving when you spot a metal slime and then disable your autosave, as when you enter combat, it is random though how many metal slimes you will be facing, and obviously the difference between one or four of them is quite a lot of experience, at least 30,000 to be precise. But if you're using additional tools like let's say a bumper bonus ball that doubles your experience gain, then the difference can be a whole 60,000 experience which is quite considerable. So basically, you disable your autosave, save before entering battle, and you quit your game and reload your last save until you get four of them. But I personally don't like this method as I've been extremely unlucky and I've never got four slimes before, and like I said, you'll bump into slimes on this route so much that I think just fighting whatever you meet is a lot faster than reloading and reloading, especially with how slow the game is on the Nintendo Switch. Just keep in mind when you reload your save, the metal slimes won't be there, don't panic, it just means you have to run a little bit back and it will appear exactly where it was before. And with that said, that is everything to know about leveling up really fast if you're around the middle of the game and you need that extra boost. I'm quite relieved that metal slime grinding is so smooth and non-random in Dragon Quest Monsters 3. I was somewhat afraid it will be way worse of a grind when I saw that there were only metal slime tickets, but fortunately, this back and forth is quite smooth and I would even say is really enjoyable. But hope this video was useful and helpful to you all. Thank you so much for joining for a quick leveling guide today. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and check out the rest of the channel for more synthesis guides for powerful monsters and talents. Thank you for watching everyone, take care and I'll see you all the next time.